entertained? Are you not entertained? Arena of the Mind, we're outside again. Wednesday, October 10th. Um, we pretty much are gonna get right into it, you know. Rondo just came out uh, again saying he's the best point guard in the league, saying that it's 80% mental and 20% physical, which I do agree with. Mm -hmm. But he feels like that because he can control the game, even if Doc Rivers wasn't there, that it makes him the best point guard in the league. You got I mean, he has a good argument. I mean, especially last year's playoffs, he was um, getting triple doubles like right. every game. He was controlling the game. He was single-handedly keeping them in the game, him and Garnett. Right. In the game with the Miami Heat, Miami Heat should have beat them in five games. It went seven. They they were on the verge of beating the Heat. Right. They were up three games to two because of Rondo. But so he has an argument. I, he has a good argument, but, but he's not other, better than Chris Paul. Thank you. And he's a floor general himself. He mm -hmm. controls the tempo. Rondo doesn't control tempo. Right. Like 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 Chris Paul does. Chris Paul wants to if the game wants to be slowed down, Chris Paul slow the game down. And the game will slow down. You know? And okay, that's great. You can control the game with Doc Rivers there. I mean, Chris Paul has Vinny Del Negro as his head coach. Uh. And they still doing good things, being ranked top five in coming into the new season and things like that. So Pretty much, Rondo is a Rondo is a product of the players around him, right? And the system, Doc Rivers' system. Because what if Chris Paul was on Boston? Or what uh, if Darren we, Williams is on Boston? You know, and that's a lot of things I was hearing about on Twitter. It was like, take out Darren Williams, take out Chris Paul. Who's your one and two? Who does that? That's not take how, out. No, that's you not. You can't take out. No, people. we're not taking out. Anybody. You can't. Oh, let's take out. Take out Michael Jordan. Take out Magic Johnson. Who's the All best right. player ever? <laughs> no, you don't uh, do that. No. Yeah. So. You know, Rondo's going to have his opinion, but that's what you want him to have. You want him yeah. to have that he's state not, of mind. He's not supposed to say anybody yeah, better than him. No, not at all. So, you know, now LeBron James is working on his sky hook him, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, a little hook, hook boy. Hey! And what did you say earlier? What did, why do you think he's working on his hook shot? Because he's bored. Because he can do whatever <laughs> he wants in the game. You know, he controls the game already, so he might as well add something else to his repertoire. Right. He, this is not new. He was doing that sky hook. Last year, he started doing that last year, and he was making them. Right. You know, and LeBron's LeBron's practice routine is uh serious, so I'm sure they threw that in there. He was working on it, and then he brought it out in the game. Yeah, definitely. He was he was doing it last year. Last year, you know, he worked with Hakeem, the Dream, on his post moves. Now he's mm -hmm. looking in the sky hook. And that brings a point: Why doesn't people make more of a comparison with LeBron with Magic than LeBron and Michael? Because LeBron is offensively as gifted as Michael Jordan, almost. Not not quite, but LeBron averages, what, 27 a game last year? I mean, 27 for a career. He's averaged 31 points a game. Before. Magic's average is around 25, 26 points a game, too. I mean, I'm just. Yeah, but LeBron's more prolific scorer than Magic. LeBron goes in there and dunks on people. Like Jordan did, he dunks on people, he shoots threes. Magic Johnson didn't really shoot threes like that. He could. He could, but it was his shot was kind of ugly. It was awful. <laughs> it was he awful. had one of the ugliest shots. Magic Johnson's shot was it, awful. But it, it went in. And it he did scored, go in. you know. It did go at will. And he's and he's I, I just feel that because he played all he Magic played all five positions. Mm -hmm. Won when championships had to win. He played center when Cream was out. You know, he passes the ball and pretty much Magic when he had the ball in his hand in the eighties, you didn't know what he was gonna do what he was gonna do. He was a threat. Because he can pass, he can shoot, he can score, go to the hole and score on you. You just never knew. And he always controlled the tempo at a fast pace for someone that size. And that's why I see that comparison more closely than Michael Jordan and LeBron. I say they should throw LeBron at point guard full time. I that's mean, he, that's he a great idea. I mean, I mean he basically plays example. point. I mean, he basically plays point guard now. Magic is a great example. That's why Mario Chalmers is like, I'm top ten in the league. No, you're not. Like LeBron brings the ball up, he runs the offense. He, he averages more assists. The small four is averaging more assists than the point guard. So LeBron's the point guard. Right. So just put Ray Allen in the starting lineup, take Chalmers off. Why not? Good. I, I agree. I mean, I feel like lose. LeBron could be listed as a point guard if you really wanted yeah. to. Like, I want to be listed as a point same guard. Same height. Shooter. They're the same height. Him and Matt Johnson both 6'9". Yeah. Same height. Throw LeBron at point. Throw Wade at the two or Ray Allen. Interchangeable. Right. Two and three is basically the same thing. The four would be like Battier, five Bosch. There you go. 
That team, you never know. Or four we'll Rashard Lewis. You know, I, I don't know. As you can see, we're really looking forward to seeing this, yeah. this season. This NBA season is going to be nice. Is be get everybody down, calling Kobe old. He, Kobe's even embracing it. I'm about to retire. But if you haven't seen the video, which should come up in a second, is Kobe Bryant dunking on Antoine Davis. Banged on his face. And he put his, that put his arm on his shoulder. And, and slammed him. Dunked on him one hand. Give us some. Give us some. Say, welcome to the Lakers, bro. Welcome to the Lakers. <laughs> welcome to LA. That 34 was, years old. He still got, he still got a bounce, bro. I mean, so, fear the Black Mamba, because he's still no joke. Yeah. Um, as you heard, T-Mac had a heartfelt letter on um, Facebook to everyone saying that he's going to China. Um, and appreciate to all the people's, like, his fans and everyone that supported him over the years in the NBA, 15 years in the NBA. So that's a, a long career. He's not retiring. He's hopefully, hopefully to be brought back to the NBA soon. But he'll, he'll come back next season. You know, but China's good look for him. Yeah, How much he getting paid? Like four million dollars. Four million dollars. Compared to like a million here, you got to you got to take it, man. And more fans out there, honestly, too. Yeah. Try more something fans. new. Go to China. You don't like it? Come back to the NBA. Hey, a team assi- it was teams paycheck. interested in it was teams interested in signing T Mac. So right. he's not like Iverson's done with the NBA. Nobody wants to sign him. Which is sad. Which I really wish you know, he was ah he was He like burned, a he lot burned of to, he burned too many bridges, man. He did. He was a lot of people's favorite player growing up. Yeah. I know shoot. I had braids at one point. Yeah, I, I, Right, I, me too. I, I I I I'm not gonna say I was I pretty much copied him. I don't know. Just do the move from the commercial. <laughs> Trying to. But uh, um, it's just it's just something sometimes sad to see when you guys see players like T Mac that were so like important to the game coming in, coming mm-hmm. in eighteen, you know, go overseas because he couldn't find a job in the NBA or couldn't find what he wanted to find. Right. You know. I mean, it's a cycle of cycle of life, man. In the NBA, you can't play in the NBA forever. Right. It has to come to an end. I don't think T Mac is finished though. So, I don't think T Mac is finished. Maybe next year a team assignment. Well, two, I know Laker fans and Clipper fans are happy. Chris Paul and Dwight Howard are okay to practice. Yeah. They're, they can fully engage in all contact and everything like that. So that's good for them out there. No, you, no surprise. We're yeah. going to be up early on the West Coast. It'll be 7, at 4.30 in the morning. From the East Coast, 7, 7.30 in the morning. NBA TV, Heat yes. playing the Clippers in China. Um, which China is, games. It'll be a great game for the first half. At least you can see uh, Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, LeBron, Chris Paul, Ray Allen, Rashad Lewis, Dwayne Wade, all them folks playing. And uh, happy the NBA season is here. Yes. NFL, top, we've been chatting about this for a while. We have different opinions who the top five teams are. So we want to let y'all know exactly who we think is the top five teams in the NFL. You go first. Oh, you want me to go first? You go first. All right, I'm going to go first. So my number one team obviously would be the San Francisco 49ers. Because they might have lost the Vikings, but that was a fluke game. Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons, nope. Houston Texans are number two. Uh-huh. Defense is much better than Atlanta. So Atlanta's my number three. Number four will be um, the Baltimore Ravens, I guess. Baltimore Ravens, uh, because they're what, four and one. They got good D. And number five will be my sleeper that they're going to keep going, keep playing well. Minnesota Vikings. Yes. Minnesota Vikings, number five. That's, I mean, they're four and one. I mean, they're four and one. Hopefully, they keep playing well. That's my time. Uh, we'll see in four weeks if they're still playing well. Go ahead with yours. Um, number one, I got the Atlanta Falcons at five and zero. Oh. These boys are nice offensively, defensively. Still some holes, but Matt Ryan's playing well. They have Julio Jones and Roddy White. Um, Julio Jones is number two receiver, but he's emerging as the number one receiver in his second year in the league. He's a he's a monster, straight up monster. If you get a chance to watch the Falcons, watch them offensively. Every game they put up points, it's always exciting. Number two, San Francisco 49ers. They lost one game. They really shouldn't have lost that game. I was just a let mental letdown. They let Minnesota win the game. It's a fluke. They really should be undefeated. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they only lost maybe one more game this year. End up fourteen. They got the Giants next, so yeah, I, they, I, they could beat the Giants. Oh, I totally forgot about the Giants. They're not in the top five. What? No. Okay, go. On. No, 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 no. Number three, I got the Houston Texans. Got to respect them. Five and zero. Andre Johnson, Matt Schaub, 
Um, J.J. Watt on defense is great. He's a great player. Batting balls down, sacking the quarterback. He's everywhere. Get it. If you get a chance, check them out. Team on the rise. Number four, Baltimore Ravens, 4-1. and one. They really should be 3-2. and two. He missed that field goal, and I'm still pissed. Hater. I'm Win still pissed. No, it did wins. not go in. We're going to move on. We all watched the game. All right, no, and number man, five, I got the New England Patriots. Because they can probably beat. They're 3-2, and two, but they can beat. All the four teams I just named ahead of them, they could beat them. Defensively, they got some question marks, but none of those teams want to see New England. Straight up. So that's my top five. I just don't understand how you uh, New England. Uh, you know what? New I will nice, man. Real nice, but I will. I have to say I do put the Giants in there. You know why? Because they have. They're playing well. Ahead of who? Vikings. Uh, yes. Okay. But they're playing well because they're, they're missing so many people. Yeah, they're missing Hakeem Nix. They're missing Which is huge. It's huge. And they still... He caught, what, 10 passes his last game for like 199 last, yards? Yeah, the last game he played, it was nice. And well, he was, and, and, and he injured his foot during the game. He was still right. playing still at playing high level. level. I need so, him to come back to my fantasy team. <laughs> people <laughs> in the fantasy team just take this a lot. That's, that's the reason why I don't play. Because it just takes sometimes sucks to find the game. Everybody but that, this is why I'm not playing NBA fantasy. But that's a whole nother. I I'm might not. play NBA fantasy. You are? I might. I'm not. I'm not. I just like watching basketball. I don't want to taint our NBA watching. Well, to jump off another subject that's not, nothing to do with sports. Did you watch the BET Cyphers yesterday? Not yet. Honestly. Us, not yet. Well, I personally feel. You can go on that <laughs> It was good. Good ciphers everywhere. Most of it sounded like everybody had their lines already put together. You know, oh, yeah, certain people in there, probably, you could yeah. tell, my child is Gambino. He, he came off the top. I feel like everybody at the West Coast table came off the top. Like, that was, like, truly off the top, you could tell. Who was the West Coast cipher? Exhibit, corrupt. Exhibit. Ex- <laughs> what? Exhibit, Exhibit, corrupt, E-40, Snoop, DJ Quip, Kendrick, and YG. DJ Quick and and the thing is the, what for one if y'all forgot Eve got bars so I'm oh, happy yeah, she came not, back and did she I saw that one Eve was looking good dog <laughs> Eve was looking fine <laughs> she's always been fine hey, but Eve. but Eve. yeah West Coast I feel like it's, I might be biased but I felt like it was the only true freestyle uh, and the Rough Riders I feel like the Rough Riders also was a freestyle those two cyphers were straight freestyle the whole time. I don't think I watched the Grand Hustle one, but I have to watch that one. But those two, the ones I seen, were straight off the top of the dome. Everybody else looked like it was like I wrote my entire quality was nice. Everybody else was off to like I wrote my down, came in there and spit, you know, my bars. Was Kendrick and Abso on there? Oh uh, yeah, Abso was another one, and another one. And yeah, I like I like what the West TDE. Coast is doing right now. TDE, I like TDE. So TDE's nice. Expand your mind, music. You know, I know all you East Coast folk don't like listen to West Coast. Hey, go I over listen there. To we, we, man. we listen to East Coast stuff. I mean, I'm just like, you know, we like to, I mean, y'all always on the radio. I mean, I'm not, so we we kind of have to listen <laughs> to East Coast stuff, even though we, won't, we don't want to. Um, but, you know, West Coast usually never known for, I mean, for, for, the, for a while hasn't been known for making like club hits and stuff to be played on the radio all the time. We might have once in a while. Joints. West Coast has spitters though, like so he's, now he's like, spitting stuff that be just... Kendrick, Absol, ridiculous. I mean, you still got the game out there. Uh, it's one of my favorite rappers personally. The game, um, yeah. West Coast, West Coast is back, man. Hopefully, we make it come back. Hopefully, yeah. West Coast is Kendrick, back. Lyricist, of the, lyricist of the year, Kendrick Lamar. What you think about that? Rifles, rifles. I mean, I mean, he won that over Nas and Hove and. I mean, Kendrick's. Kendrick says some ridiculous stuff in his songs, man. He's probably too deep for something. I couldn't, I can't even um, debate with the win. I tweeted yesterday, like, wow, after Vibes, and they retweeted me. I was like, what? That made his day everywhere. Yeah, Vibe, Vibe Magazine <laughs> retweeted me yesterday just for saying, wow. I'm like, I mean, I was like shocked. But, you know, October uh, 10th, Wednesday, Arena of the Mind, we're out here. Twitter's on the bottom. I am Charles Dixon. I'm Rob Parks. We're here, Ring of Mind. Twitter name. It is up on Twitter, uh, Facebook, our names, pretty much that too. Uh, we're coming back at you on Friday with some NFL stuff, some NCAA stuff, and some more NBA stuff. Just yeah. a whole lot of stuff. Take the time. Live your life, man. Do what you want to do. 
Um, be grateful for what you have. Don't complain. Stop complaining. When you wake up every day, just write down three to five things you're grateful for. It makes a difference. I just wanted to tell everybody that. You know, I read that this morning. Kind of hit me. So, you know. Bye bye.